morning, everybody, and welcome to Quilt Tribe in June. I'm sorry it's so late for a couple weeks, but things happen. It's a busy month. Um, it's been really busy at my house, and I have I have no close-up camera to show you. Cool. But the maybe oh, the, baby. the baby has come. Oh. Isn't that cute? Oh, that is. So her name is Sadie Kate. Like so I know I like using I like her middle name with it, Sadie Kate. Sadie Kate. So she's really cute. This is within hours after birth, yeah. and how big? Seven pounds four ounces, oh. and 19 inches oh. long, and three hours of labor. And my daughter-in-law said it was very tiring, and I said, "Oh, honey." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is my son Dylan, and this is his first Father's Day. Oh. Yes, he's quite bonded with the child. That's oh, for sure. That's good. Yeah. So isn't that cute? So that's that my exciting cute. news. Oh. Yeah. So it's really fun. Oh, super. I'm enjoying what it. What day was she born? On June 9th. Oh. And it's really hard. They live like really close to here. And it's very hard for me not to go to their house like every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. So I, I send them texts every day. I said, where's my daily picture? If I don't oh. get my picture, I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I get to go today, I think. So, oh, all right. anyway, um, Quilt Tribe, if you guys cool. got your patterns, you notice yes. it's a new printer, and I think they're really nice. Yes. I hope you enjoy them. Yes. Hope you enjoy them. So, we're just going to go block by block. Cool. So, if you open it up, the first one we're going to do is Upland, and I'll put it up on the board for you. I like it. I like that. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, it kind of gives an illusion of a block underneath a block. I think it kind of is, is cool. Very simple to do. All right, so I'm just going to put everything right here for Eric. And just kind of, we're going to show the, our little steps. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make our peace triangle squares. And we have two rectangles, one of our background and one of our dark. So there's a two. You remember, you always start by making a line, a vertical line, so you can divide your rectangle into two squares. From there, we're going to put one diagonal line in each one, so a quarter inch away. Okay, is it coming back to you? Yes. Yes, it's coming back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it on all the drawn lines. Okay, good. Yeah, we're just moving right along. And then we're going to square it up. Okay, and these, uh, I'm doing the 12 inch blocks. So these are going to get squared up to four and a half. You look at the little chart. If you're doing nine, it's three and a half. And you're doing six, it's two and a half. And I brought in, I'm always talking about this turnable mat. Oh, yeah. So I brought it in. And I like to use the fussy cut rulers. We do have fussy cut rulers for two and a half, three and a half, and four and a half. But you can see how if I just place the line right on that seam line, mm -hmm. All you do is you just rotate your mat and just keep cutting around it. You don't have to like pick up your fabric, you know, get all messed up. So I think it's a great tool to use. Okay, so that takes care of those. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our quarter square patch. It's right in the middle of the block. So if you look at our little illustration, it's this piece right here. And again, we're going to start with two squares. And we're just going to draw one diagonal line, and so one quarter inch away from both sides. And from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut on both diagonal lines. So it looks like we have these little quarters. Okay? Simple enough, right? Okay, this is what it was like before it was sewn, and before it was cut. Because we started here. We're just sewing along the line, the permanent line but we're cutting on both diagonals, okay? And we're going to do this patch several times for I this month. Because you didn't have another line, diagonal line. Yeah, no, it's just a cut line. This is a sew line and that's a cut line. Okay, so when we get that, we're going to press all of our seams so they go towards the dark. And if you look at them, you'll see that two go this way and two go that way. They're like mirror image. And the trick is to take the two that look the same, okay, in the same direction, and you're just going to turn one of those around, 
it gives you that patch. And then this one, you'll turn this around, and it'll give you that patch. It's really easy to think, to go, oh, I need to take one of those. Well, that doesn't work, but right. they got to be the same ones. Oh, okay. Okay? okay? Now, we're only going to use one of these patches because we only have one sent over the block. But um, we're going to keep the other one, and we're going to do something else with it later. Okay? So once we get them all laid out, you're just going to flip one right sides over to the other, and we'll just sew down connecting the two, and then we'll press it open. And for this block, we're going to open that seam on the back and swirl it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how it's really cool to square up this block. Okay, can you see how both seam lines just line up right on that fussy cut ruler? So there's like really no question about it. Okay, so I'm just going to go up one side and go along to the other side. And can you see how I kind of have my finger on the side out there? Mm -hmm. That's holding my ruler in place so it doesn't slip on me. Okay? Okay? Yeah, it helps a lot. So I'm just going to turn it around, put my finger down, again putting my ruler there. Especially when you have, even though we took a swirl here to kind of reduce that height of that fabric, it still has a tendency to kind of rock on it. So kind of stabilizing the edge, I think, helps a lot. Okay, so we'll go across and along the top. And then it's perfect. All right. All right? Okay, so now we can lay out our blocks. We have all our pieces. So there's our center. Okay, I guess I should throw those over my shoulder like Eleanor. There you go. Whoops, did you see it came back? That was pretty funny. Okay, so we have those, and those, and those. Okay, I'm lining it up so I have all the light color coming at, you know, like a mountain. Okay, and I know these patches will go. They're just solid. Solid sides. Those are easy ones, huh? All right. And since we did the, when we did our initial um, patch like this, all of our seams are going to rotate in the same direction. You're not going to have half going one way and half going the other. So that's really great because it's all going to lock with these seams here. Oh, okay. Okay? Cool. So it should be really successful for you. All right. That was pretty good, huh? One down, five to go. All right, the next one we're going to do is antelope. Okay, I'll put antelope up on the board. Okay, this one you can tell is exact same size and technique that we did for these over here. Okay, so this now that you've learned how to do it, you're just going to practice on three different colors. So to get started, again, we're going to start with a background square and a square for each color. So just make sure you have three different sets. I think it, the picture kind of says it all, right? Nice picture of antelope, isn't it? Oh, yes. Okay, so you can see I have the, the three colors there in the green. All right, and we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did before by drawing your line, sewing on both sides, and cutting it all apart. I think it's pretty self I think you already kind of got that instructions. Yeah, you got that down. Even I can do that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so for e you only need to do one set for each of your color combinations. So like there's my blue, and I just did a sample of technique by for each color. Okay. Here's our next step. We're going to sew the two together. Okay. And then we have here, okay, at that point, and then we're going to square up, okay? So let's go ahead and lay out the block. Okay, so we can just, you can put these in any order that you want. I just alternated, do you see how this is twisted? I didn't put them all the same way. I just sort of twisted the middle one, just to kind of disperse the color a little bit. And then on the top and bottom, we just have our white squares. Yeah. And then I decided to use a stripe fabric for my corners. But just make sure if you do stripe, make sure you have your stripe all going in the same direction. Yeah. 
It, you, it's kind of funny when you go and you have like, yeah. whoops, whoops. <laughs> Unless you did the other bottom square. Yeah. Bottom yeah. Right. Or you kind of, you could go like, so it kind of circulates. Yeah. Whatever, be consistent and that will work. Okay? <laughs> All right. And so now you're going to have the total of four, right? We had an extra one from the first block and now we have right. three extra ones. They're just coming right along, right? Okay, the next one is called Xylon, and when I originally did Quilt Tribe, I was trying to do every alphabet, you know, every letter of the alphabet in order. Uh -huh. okay. So I called this one Xylon, and this morning I forgot what Xylon stood for, and it's actually a part of a plant that's not very nutritious. In case you wanted to know, this is your word of the day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but I was looking for an X word. And I thought it was kind of plants, and Indians lived left a lot of plants and things like that. So it's a good thing I put this little strawberry in there, right? Yeah. All right. I know, I couldn't remember what it stood for. It's part of a plant that's not what? Nutritious. Okay. So to do it, we're just going to do a combination of techniques we already did. It's just a different way of putting them together. So again, we're going to make that quarter square triangle. And can you see where those go in your block? These go right here. So we know that each pair of background and medium fabrics make two, right? So we're going to need to make two sets to get a total of four. You won't have any extra ones in this one. We're going to start out exactly the same way, cut it apart, okay, do you get to there. The only real important difference of this block is we do not swirl the seams. And I know, yes, um, hmm. it's like on page nine, step five, it says do not swirl the seam. Well, I would probably underline that. Maybe I should have made that bold, I don't know. But hmm. don't swirl it because I want it to lock to those corner piece triangle square blocks. So that's oh, some. Oh, so if you swirl it, it. Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now we need to make the corners. And again, that's the whole thing where we start with two rectangles. And we're going to draw one line to make squares, then one diagonal line in each one. So on both sides, okay? And once they're all cut apart and pressed, we're going to press all of our seams towards the dark. And I'm actually going to lay this block out upside down for you so you can see how everything's going to go. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do is make the center. You can choose to fussy cut if you want. And I found this cute little strawberry fabric, so I decided to do that. Well, I guess I think I went this way. Okay, so you're just going to sew your sides on first. And then after you sewed your sides, you're just going to sew a top and bottom. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. Okay, so let's lay the block out. Okay, and there's a good picture of it backwards. Okay. And what I'm looking at right here is I am looking at the part of this patch where both of these go in the same, um, towards the same background. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be on the outer edge of your patch or your block. Okay, and it shows that in the picture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place these like this. And now you can see how this seam goes up, or like this way, and this one will go this way. So that will lock. Mm -hmm. This will lock. They'll lock all the way around. And it's going to give you really a lot cleaner line when you get to here, because this is a lot of bulk. And this could really, you know, kind of get kind of squishy. So anyway, that's how you make it work. But just pay attention to where the placement of these are. Because mm, okay. if you turn them like this, then it's not going to work. Can you see how both those seams will go down? Mm -hmm. so that's the trick to that one. Okay. I had to think about that one. So when you sew it, let's talk about when you sew it. OK, sew let me turn around. It. OK, okay sewing it together. What I'm going to do is I'll take, this is the column on the left, so I'm going to take the patches right to the right. I'm going to flip these right sides together. 
like this, and I'm going to start up here, and I'm just going to sew straight down. Okay? I don't. I leave the thread there. I don't even want to break the thread because then I might mix up what rows I'm on. Okay. okay. So pretend that that's sewn. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to take the final one and flip that right sides together, and sew again, quarter inch down. Okay, so now those are sewn. Fake sew. <laughs> Do a patty thing. Patty likes to go like this. <laughs> okay, so then those are sewn. And then we'll just turn the whole thing around 90 degrees and we'll sew the top row together and we'll sew that row together. Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah. And you're going to um, press your seams towards the corner patches and towards the middle. And then all these little intersections right here will lock. So basically, you can say press towards the corners or the center or press away from these quarter square triangles. Okay. That's the way it's going to want to go because it's the least resistance. Okay? okay. So any questions? Mm -hmm. You're going to be expert at these quarter square triangle patches <laughs> by the time you get to. <coughs> we only have one more to show you that. And this one's called Sue for the Indians, not Sue as in oh, me. I it was Susan. Oh, Susan. No. <laughs> okay, I think this would be a really neat repeat pattern. You know, like a row of pink with that and a row of blue. Hmm. All right, so this one, you know, you guys know how to make all the patches. I'm just going to lay it out for you and show you how it works because I think you have it down. Okay, the only little bit different thing that we're going to do is, remember before I just had one drawn line mm -hmm. and I sewed on both sides but cut on both diagonals? Mm -hmm. Well, this time I'm actually going to draw two lines and go down the left side. When I get to the middle, I'm going to go over here and pivot and I'm going to go down the other side. Oh. Okay, then when I go down this way, same thing. Pivot, go down the other side. Now, some people get really nervous if their quarter inch doesn't really show that quarter. So what you can do, if, that, if you don't feel comfortable with that, just sew to the middle, turn it 90 degrees, sew to the middle, and you can always use your quarter inch indication of your foot. Okay. And then you, you don't have the guesswork. Some feet now have quarter inch on both sides, so that's really great. And the advantage of doing that is remember last time I had two going one way? and two going the other way, and two going this way. When you sew these, all of them are going to be going the same way. Oh, okay. okay? And the advantage of doing that for this block is that if you look at the back, can you see how these all swirl in the same way? Mm -hmm. The other way that we do it, half swirl one way and half swirl the other way. So when we do that, these are always going to lock here. So it looks the same on the front, but it makes a difference on the back. So it's just another way of getting to the same thing. Let's lay the block out and see how it looks. I haven't turned my page yet. Okay, so I have four of the blue, but I'm going to again have an extra one of the pink. Or what, you know what else you could do if you didn't <laughs> want it for the middle? If you didn't want to do that, you could just um, use one of your leftover ones from the first block for the middle. That'd be a good idea, huh? It would. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I just thought of that. That could have saved us some time, huh? Okay. <laughs> so there's the first and third row with the blue. And here's with the pink. And I'm sure down here somewhere I have a pink one. Yes, I do. Okay, so there you go. That's all there is to it. And then, as I said, all these intersections are going to lock for you really good. So it's just a different way. There's a lot of ways to get to the same end result. All right, any questions? No? Okay, we're, I think we're done with this quarter square triangle for this morning. We're going to try something else.
All right. The next one we're going to do is called You Can. You can. You can. You can do this. You can. <laughs> I know. It really reminds me of a shooting star. It does. So we're going to do some geese and we're going to learn how to do this patch, okay? Okay, so this is a little reminder of geese. Okay, remember how it starts? I know you have it in your definitive guide on how to do geese. Okay, you have two sizes of square. You have your a background square and the color of the star points, which is going to be pink in this case. All right, so you guys have to go back and remember how to do that. And once you get your geese done, <laughs> you're laughing. I know you can do it. Okay, so you're going to sew, we're going to have, this is going to be sewn like this, and it's going to look kind of funny, because this one has both of the corners of the star, but this one only has one, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So you want to sew, make one full, and you're going to sew these geese patches to the center, and then one here, okay? And we're going to set that aside, and then I'm going to go into making that ray. So the first thing you're going to do, and these just look absolutely huge, but you take a rectangle, it tells you what size rectangle for what size block, and you want to make sure that your fabrics are wrong sides together, okay? You don't want to put wrong to right. Don't layer them all right side up, okay? And then you're going to cut one diagonal line from corner to corner, and it doesn't matter if you cut it this way or if you cut it this way, but cut it just one diagonal one way. Left-handed people like one way, right the other. So that's all it you need to do. Okay, so we're going to have that. And when that's done, we're going to take those and we're going to layer them so they're all right side up. These gigantic, don't they look big? <laughs> they are big. Okay, yeah, wrong sides together. Okay. The next thing we need to do is to cut our ray. I'm just going to set these aside to cut our ray fabric. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is if you just have a, a regular ruler. Um, I know for the 12-inch block that this is 7 and a half inches, okay? So I need to make a little tick mark half of 7 and a half. So that would be 3 and 3 fourths, right? Very good math today. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little tick mark. Okay, and then I'm going to, it can be this side or that side, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to make another mark at one and three-fourths. Can you see my tick marks? Are they dark enough? Okay. I am going to go from where the tick mark hits the edge of the fabric, not the top part of it, but where it hits the edge of the fabric, and I am going to make a cut from that to the opposite corner, so it looks like that, okay? We're making a kite shape, and then I'm going to go over to this tick mark, and I'm going to make a cut to the same corner that I just used before, okay? Can you see how that looks like a kite? Okay, so that, w that works. That's one way of doing it, but I'm going to give you a little preview Orion and I have been working on a new kite ruler that looks like that. Can you see it on the fabric? Oh, I like that. I Isn't like that, that nice? Yes. So this is a prototype. Oh, I want one. But you can make these kite shapes. A lot of times when people manually cut these kites, they just they don't cut to the right directions. Like so that. this one, it has all the different measurements, you know, depending on what size square you have. Uh -huh. So this is going to be coming. So look forward to it. It's the I kite ruler. Put me on the list. Put you on the list. Woohoo! I know. We're quite excited about that. Okay. Oh, it takes a while to get things working. Okay, so those ones, those rectangles that we cut before, mm -hmm. we're going to lay it out with this. Okay, see how it looks? Okay. Okay. Now, what I've learned is you really want to just lay it out so it almost looks like a square. And you want, I think of it as like turning the pages of a book. You know how I just turn the page. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this page here and put it right sides together. 
and we're going to sew one quarter inch down. And you will have a big tail there. Okay, so you don't match it up totally in the corner? No. One fourth inch from the top. One fourth inch. So where your seam starts, it's going to start right where that little valley is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I believe there should be a nice picture of that on page 18. So let me show it to you sewn. It'll look a little clearer. Can you see how my, how my stitches started right there at that intersection with the red thread? I think that, that helps a lot, seeing the red. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to press it away from our kite shape. And you see how you have this big tail right here? We want to get rid of that because I'm going to sew this seam next and this is going to get in my way. So I'm going to cut that tail off. Now could you use your kite ruler on that? Um, you could, but it's just as easy to just use a straight edge. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just going to follow the edge of the kite as a guide. Uh -huh. You're not even looking at a measurement. Okay. okay? And you're cutting that tail off. That's, I mean, you're going to cut quite a bit off. Mm. Okay. But if you're sewing along, you're going to go, oh, darn, I forgot to cut my tail off, right? Because it's going to be a mess. Okay. It's going to it, so be hard to do it. Okay, so now this is ready to go. And now we're going to take our right side back. Again, it's like reading a book. You're going to flip it right sides together. And this time we're leaving the little white hanging out there. And my quarter inch is going to start right in that valley. And you're going to take it all the way out to the end. So if you see it sewn, here's with red thread so you can really see what I'm talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we're going to press it out flat. Okay, now we also have this ruler that's coming very shortly. It's called an on point ruler. And can you see these red lines right here? Mm -hmm. We are going to just put those red lines right on that seam line, mm -hmm. okay, and cut around the outside. Or you have the option. Can you see how my ray is like a little bit away from it to kind of give that more look to it of kind of a shooting star? So what you can do, you can just take this ruler and just move it up so I have some more distance there. Can you see I went to the point? And it, it doesn't really matter if this is exact or not, but I'm trying to keep the distance between this red line from there. Okay. And so, and I kind of want that look. So I'm going to cut mine like that. So just get rid of the excess. And this ruler does, for these patches, anything from six and a half to, I would say, one's probably about as small as you could go. So what do you think? That's pretty easy, huh? Wow. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. So... I'm going to bring back over my star, and you're going to see how this just sort of fits up in there, right? But to make it fit, what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is sew these two pieces together, okay? And once that's done, we can add on this part, this little filler. And this piece, we need to add a little piece of filler to that as well, okay? And then we'll sew that to that, and then finally we'll sew that seam. Oh. And that's how we can get this thing to look like it's tucked up in there. That's cool. cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's a fun way. It's not very hard. It's just a matter of taking it apart and putting it back together. Alrighty. Okay, we got one more, and this one is, will just amaze you. I love it. I spend all this time making all my stacks this perfectly. <laughs> you should go over there and look at it. Okay. Okay, this is our final one. Okay, let's see what the name of this is. Or. Okay, to make this or, we're going to make two patches. Okay, one is going to be white with one of your mediums around it, and when it's sewn together, it's going to look like that. Okay, 
The next patch, what we're going to do is we're going to have a darker center with background on the outside now, and it'll look like this. Okay? The difference is when we're sewing these, we all well, we always want to sew or press our seams away from our background. So in this case, it's pressed towards the middle. And when we sew this one, it's pressed away from the middle. And the reason we want to do that, because I am actually going to lay these right sides together like this, and all these seams are going to lock. Mm -hmm. This seam right here is going to lock underneath because they're going in opposite directions. Okay, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Okay, and you're making two sets of these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw one diagonal line and sew a quarter inch from both sides. And I, rec I left these pins here because I really recommend that you pin these two because since you have like a lot of bulk going on, they might shift on you. Mm. Um, but you're going to just think this is really cool. Okay, so after it's done, you're going to cut it apart and you're going to get one of your patches looking like that on that side. And then from the other side, you're going to get another patch. So when you have four of them, I'm keeping the blue on the outside of my block. Okay, and that's the block. Wow, that was easy. That was easy. And I, would, I haven't trimmed these little tips off, but I would definitely trim those off. You do not need to square these up. They're already at the correct squaring. Okay? Wow. So that, isn't that easy? Yeah, that's a really easy, and it looks, when you look at it, it looks like it'd be really complicated. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's why I was looking in here, I was like, hmm. Ooh, I don't know if I'm doing that Change one. my question mark to a yeah. star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and when you press these, um, just make sure you press two of your diagonal seams one way and two the other way. That way your seams will lock on the back. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll lay it out backwards for you. There you go. Can you see how these two go in yeah. uh -huh. and these two go out? Okay. Okay, and there's an illustration of that as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed this month's blocks. See you next <laughs> month. Yay!